Hey everyone! Would you like to learn how to paint flowers realistically? In this video, I'll show you how to paint beautiful magnolia flowers. I'll share with you the acrylic paints that I use as well as all of the supplies. Also included will be a link in the description below to my Pinterest page that will show you, um, it'll be a downloadable sketch of the magnolia blossom design. Feel free to print that out and follow along with me. And let's get started. Paint with me, please. Thank you. This magnolia painting is done on a 12 by 12 inch sheet of paper. So how I began the sketch is I actually used a cereal bowl that was about eight and a half inches around. I lay that on my paper um, and make sure it's centered. And I just sort of eyeball. You can use a ruler if you want to make sure it's centered on all four sides. Draw a little circle around there. I love to use big mechanical pens like you see me using here. Um, they just have a really nice um, texture to the pencil, um, the graphite, and then of course they have that great built-in eraser on the, the end. So I just begin this actual magnolia, um, the blossoms, I there's a tree that grows right outside of my studio, blooms this time of year, it's beautiful. So I just went out and snipped some um, two little buds and a bloom to work off of to do the sketch. So please feel free to go to my Pinterest page and download um, and print out that Magnolia sketch and follow along with me if you like. So basically all I'm doing is sketching out the Magnolia, um, the petals. There's usually about, um, there can be up to, I think about nine total petals um, on this particular Magnolia, which is a saucer Magnolia. The petals are absolutely beautiful. They're thick and leathery. Um, and then, so they're just basically an elongated um, oval shape with a little bit of a tapered end um, towards the bud uh, base itself. The bark is really beautiful. Um, it's got a lot of texture to it. Now to begin painting, um, I'm use actually using um, uh, the color that's called a rouge. These are all Liquitex paints for the most part. Um, and the rouge and mixing in the, the um, purple and that gives like a really nice sort of fluorescent pink shade. Um, and I use the purple down towards the base, down towards what's called the, the bud scale. Um, and that's the little leathery covering that you see over the magnolias and those are um, year round around the flowers themselves. The buds actually go through the winter and they have this furry little covering over the buds. Um, and they're really beautiful and fuzzy. They have like thick, longer hairs on them. So using the, um, the rouge and the diazinon purple, um, like I said, those go, the, the deepest colors go towards the base of that bud scale and then out towards the tip. It also has like that thick, um, excuse me, the darker color around, completely around the border of each petal. And then the interiors are always this really bright white, which contrasts beautifully to the outside, which is the fluorescent pink. Um, so the insides of the, the petal are a white mixture mixed with a little tiny bit of the diazinon purple. And then I'm also using a fluorescent um, red, which is really beautiful. It really gives these pink shades of um, botanical paintings a pop. It gives them a f um, iridescent look, which a lot of flowers have. And around the edges um, will be a little bit of a white also around the tip. Now the buds, which I'm starting on, are a lot darker than the flower itself because they're tight, still tightly formed as are a lot of buds have like the deepest, richest colors. And then as the flower opens up, it tends to fade a little bit. So it's a really deep shade of the diazinon purple down towards the bottom. And I even mixed in a little bit of black. So a little bit of black goes around the very tip of the petal, or excuse me, around the tip of the bud and all the way um, at the bottom of the bud. You see me laying in that dark color. And I'll use a little bit of that around the, the edges of the buds too to add dimension. The middle gets more of 
the fluorescent red and the rouge and that really tends to be sort of the brightest area and that'll give sort of an illusion of a roundness to the bud and around where the petals are themselves um, there'll be I'll, I used a little bit of a titanium white to sort of highlight the the each individual petal that is forms that bud so and then um, I'm working on the upper uh, bud now again I laying in that black and sort of adding the the rouge and the I'll even mix in um, some titanium white with that rouge again like I said to sort of highlight that bud itself and then basically when you're painting you're just going to be starting out in layers and you keep adding layers over and over and over where something needs to be a little bit deeper you go in and add a little bit of more depth um, so where it's shaded, where a petal may lay underneath another petal, um, and you see I use a little bit of paper off to the side to sort of test my colors before I put it on my actual painting. Now what I'm working on is the bud scale. So this is the largest one. This would have been formed around this bud while it overwintered and very, very fuzzy. They have, um, I'm using mainly um, burnt umber mixed with some water to make it watery and to do a little bit of a wash but I also added in a little bit of the light olive green in spots and then a little tiny bit of the permanent black I'll mix in with the burnt umber and so it gives you'll see there's like a little bit of a roundness in spots and um, these are tiny little leaves that come off to the side those are done in a uh, light olive green and then I'll go around the outside with a little bit of a hooker's green and sometimes I'll even use um, burnt umber especially around the base of a leaf and this is another little tiny bud that I was just working on that was more of a yellow ochre um, mixed with um, the deepest areas where the burnt umber and the little fuzzy um, hairs that are on the um, bud scale and that little bud off to the side I'll use a titanium white and even mix a little bit of a yellow ochre in there to get a really super light creamy shade um, for the hairs and I didn't do a whole lot of detail starting out um, I just basically got a lot of the colors laid in um, because the painting um, the entire circle I went in then with um, a green gray for the background so I wanted to lay everything in generally quickly and then go back in after the background was laid in and do final detail touch up. So the bud scales around the buds were a little bit darker, um, just like the buds themselves, the, the flower, the colored portion of the petals were darker. The bud scales on the buds are also darker. So more um, burnt umber, um, there's a little tiny bit of green around the bases of the buds, um, and, and I painted from life. So basically when you paint from life, you're just doing just that. You're trying to copy what you see in life, um, and translate that onto paper. Now you can see I laid a real bud up above the painting, and that's what I was working on. I felt like the flower petals themselves of the main magnolia I just wasn't it looked dead to me and dull and didn't look lifelike so I actually went and got a fresh bud from outside and brought it in and I felt like now I could add the was getting I guess like what I could say I was getting the correct color tones in the the petals so what I did was I to fix the um the flower to give it a little bit more life I added in more of the um, permanent red the fluorescent color in washes and it really helped to give that nice pop to the magnolia flower um, and I was happier with it in the end a lot of times when you're painting that's all you're doing you're just messing you know you're just trying different things out trying to see what works trying to get it to look like the you know, either the photo reference that you're working off of or the, if it's you're working from real life, you're just trying to get that semblance of realism from that. So it takes a lot of just sort of mixing paints and applying it to your painting to see if it works or not, to see if your eye is happy with your results. 
the the magnolia stems um so what i'm doing i'm using a little teeny tiny little um liner brush just to pick up some detail around the edges of the blooms um, a little bit of um, the darkest purple and a little bit of the white so the stems themselves on magnolias on these saucer magnolias are amazing they have this beautiful sort of reddish brown color but they also have a lot of black in them and a lot of like a burnt umber color and they're extremely fun to paint they're beautiful to look at there's tiny little um, bud bracts that come off the sides um, uh, lots of little branches offshoots and um, lots of little like white dots um, on the bark themselves it's sort of a flat bark but again really beautiful in life to look at lots of texture so again I'm just adding um, bringing up the highlights on a lot of these um, the bud scales around the buds and um, I'll begin starting to work on the um, magnolia stems so I got some of the detail in here um, in the around the buds and then um, you'll see it's just a mixture of burnt umber um, yellow ochre, uh, tiny, tiny little bit of the medium olive green mixed in with the brown. And then the little hairs that come off of the, um, the bud scales um, is like a yellow ochre mixed in with a white. And sometimes I'll add a little bit of um, the golden, um, excuse me, the burnt umber. So some of them look a little bit darker, some of them are lighter, just depending on how the light would be hitting them, um, just like in real life. So now again, I'm using the um, painting in the stems, and those are a pretty deep mixture of, uh, I mixed a permanent black in with a burnt umber um, to get that base in there. And I did sort of a hit skip. So I didn't cover the stems completely, just sort of a little bit here and a little bit there. You apply your brush and then pick it up um, and that's what I call like a hit skip. So it's bouncing off of your canvas or bouncing, your brush is bouncing off of the um, paper. And um, what I'm doing is then going back in with mixtures of uh, yellow ochre mixed with a white um, and then there'll be a mixture of um, the burnt umber mixed with um, yellow ochre and then the burnt umber mixed with the white and those gives me all give me all those different shadings that you would see in stems and branches all those different um, colors really sort of add up to helping you paint realistically So I'm just finishing off the stems and there were, like I said, tons of little um, offshoots um, on these branches and they're just, there's so much detail in a magnolia stem, really beautiful. And there'll be little mini buds also off to the, you know, some of the sides. So I was felt like there needed to be something in the area off to the left side of this magnolia bud so I decided to um, paint a little leaf and add a little bit of greenery into that area just something a little bit brighter I just felt like there was too much space in between the buds um, and now I'm laying in that um, beautiful green gray uh, background which I love um, using a little bit of a larger brush I believe this is a two inch brush this is a Royal and Langnickel brush um, angle, which I love, really helps to get those corners um, and the, uh, you know, the area around the circle it just really helps to lay in that color. I hope you give this a try. Thank you so much for watching. Check back soon for more videos. Thank you.